Hello, my friends. I'm here. Hey, my friend Gabriel. How are you? <laughs> How's it going? Pretty, going pretty well. Well, you know, uh, a little bit gloomy these days Hello. because uh, we're locked down and the news is uh, not very good, whether it be the health situation or the economic situation. And uh, I'm uh, looking forward to when we come through this uh, situation. I know. Yeah, especially the, I think that the one of the scariest things too is just like really the the, the recession that is expected to follow. But Absolutely. We, yeah, yeah. We just Ready that... is, uh, to follow. We are in a recession right now. True. So now, fortunately, I think uh, our situation here in BC is a little bit better than some areas of North America. So hopefully that continues. But I'm fingers crossed. <laughs> fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. Okay. So today I thought uh, there's so many so many themes that we could approach, and I think it'd be like of so much value to people that are learning a, a new language. But I right. think that we can start with uh, with something that is, that is pretty cool that. Um, I vaguely remember that in the past, like we, and we've done a lot of videos, videos together throughout the years. I think that like whatever, right. when we uh, did videos, like maybe three years ago or whatever it right. was, yeah. I remember that you told me that you really preferred uh, back then at least to, to learn one language at a time. And that, and that was that. And uh, that was my position then. Yes. That was your, your <laughs> position. And that to me makes sense in many ways first in terms of progress second mm -hmm. in terms of really like you mentioned to me back then you kind of fall in love with it and you get really into it and you get really passionate right. and you and you yep. dedicate yourself like fully to that language you, you look forward mm -hmm. to learning it and right. uh and that makes sense you know that makes a lot of sense so right. and then but now you've been you started learning even three languages at the same time well you know it depends what you want to do mm -hmm. so my first language was french and I really got very much involved with French. I ended up going to France. I studied, I, you know, I went to the university there. Now, to be fair, I used to hitchhike into Spain. So obviously when I was in Spain, I was speaking Spanish to, you know, truck drivers or whoever picked me up. Uh, but then I had to learn Chinese for the Canadian government. So that was a full-time job. So I got totally into that. Mm -hmm. And I remember concluding at that time that the more intensity you bring to the language, that you actually get almost a geometric increase in your ability to learn. So that white heat of totally focus on, focusing on one language, you listen until you don't want to listen anymore and then you read and you might do flashcards or you might learn characters if it's Chinese characters, whatever. So intensity was good. But it depends on your goals. Right now I'm interested in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. So I want to do a little bit of Arabic, a little bit of Persian. I was doing Turkish for a while and then I dropped it because I want to, again, focus. Mm -hmm in on the Arabic script. Okay. So Persian and Arabic are both written in the Arabic script. So I think if you're learning for fun, you can do what you want. Yeah. So you can focus on one, you can do two or three. It's all good. Mm -hmm. It's all good. But if, if you are, let's say you live in Brazil, you need English for your job, then I suggest you just focus in on English. <laughs> focus in on it, no, of that. course. No, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that because something, something that is a bit interesting is that like, uh, I've come, across people, uh, and this is kind of funny, of course, like you do, you do a video, yeah. you say some things and then it just gets twisted along <laughs> and it comes back to you. So, yeah. uh, I've come across some comments of people saying like, Oh, Gabriel recommends for people to learn two or three languages at the same time. I said, well, give it a try. Then I suggest a way, uh, that like one thing that worked for me, which was like this, mm -hmm. uh, 80, 80%, 80, 20, right. mm -hmm. uh, rotational system. So basically, like I focus eighty percent of my time in one language, twenty in the different, la like in, in the mm -hmm. second language. Then I switch after after a certain amount of time, and right. uh, and that's how I learned uh, French and German at the same time, like mm -hmm. uh, between two thousand and seven and two thousand and eleven, right. and then I did the same for other language combinations. So I did that for, mm -hmm. for Dutch and Italian. I learned, I reached fluency in both of them, also because of the fact that like you know they're. Uh, Dutch is close to German, Italian is close to Spanish right. and Portuguese yeah. and so on. So, but I wouldn't say, you know, like I necessarily recommend it, but I, I, a lot of people want to learn, you know, two languages at the same time. Like, so give it a try. I think there's pluses and minuses. I do think that, that people, for example, again, speaking to a Brazilian audience who are learning English and it's, it's not uncommon. It's quite common, in fact, to have the impression that you're not making any progress. Mm -hmm. So here's a Brazilian guy or a girl and I've been learning English for however many years and I'm not getting anywhere. I think it can be good to sort of refresh things a little bit in the brain by introducing something new. Mm -hmm. So go off and do some French. Then when you come back, 
to your English, which is your main focus because you need it for your job, let's say, mm -hmm. then everything is fresh again. Yeah. So there is some benefit in doing that. Uh, but you have to want to learn French. Like if you're totally, you only want to learn one language, then you're going to stay with one language. Yeah. So I, I think, and the other thing too is 80-20 is a good rule. I used to say that myself. But in the real world, the trouble is we'll, let's say we're doing, say, you know, I'm doing Portuguese and Russian, okay? So I, I tend to get more into the Russian or more into the Portuguese. <laughs> so I want to stay with it. Yeah. So you end up staying with it because you found an interesting book. Or So it's very hard to have these hard and fast rules. Yeah, but no, the idea of a major and a minor is a good one. Yeah. And then you were saying yourself, sometimes you flip it, so then the major becomes the minor and the minor becomes the major. And I think it's very important to go with our emotions. So if you're really into language A and enjoying it, for whatever reason, you met someone or you're into an interesting movie or book, then just stay with that yeah. language A. Don't feel you have to go back to language B. No, so absolutely. I think flexibility is kind of key, but if 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 it's for your job, you absolutely need this language, then there is some benefit in staying with it until you get it to the level you want to get to. Yeah, no, in my experience, I think I think uh, yeah, you said so many amazing things there, and I, uh, what the 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 way that I kind of you know, and the way that I um, came across the eighty twenty method, you know, like that uh, mm -hmm. was was actually exactly because of interest, because some at some points I'd be just like. You know what? Like I'd be, I'd be gaining some momentum in German. I'd be like, mm -hmm. I'd be very into German and I was dating a German girl and I was just, you know, like I was doing a lot of progress. So like the, but then I would just like try, because I was also trying to learn French, I would go back to it a little bit that week, you know, mm -hmm. and just like mm -hmm. go back a little bit, but I was way more into German at that time. And then right. I'd like normally sometimes hit a plateau and feel like I had mm -hmm. progressed enough in, in German, get bored at the resources that I had. And be like, right, hmm, that too. Now Big French, factor. yeah. Now French is looking good again. Now I'm really interested <laughs> exactly. in going to Paris, and I, right. I, I got into uh, a music, like I got into like whatever Serge Gainsbourg, and then I was just like, no, now I'm gonna like. Then I would just put more effort, uh, more effort and focus into the French, and then do the mm -hmm. switch. Um, eventually, learning both uh, at the yeah. same time, but of course, like focusing. Giving, uh, having periods of focus on specific languages. Yeah, I think, you know, for people who say are still just learning one language and may only ever focus on the one language, mm -hmm. but if you do get beyond that into another language and another, there's a great world out there. You're discovering different people, different languages, different countries. And even if you have, as you say, in some of your languages, only A1 or A2, it's still worth it. Yeah. It's still worth it. Uh, it still brings me a lot of pleasure, even if I have a rather low level in a language. I don't like to feel inadequate. I am what I am. I'm A1. Okay, yeah. maybe one day I'll be A2, but right now I'm A1. Yeah. At one point I was zero. <laughs> so give yourself credit for what you can Absolutely. do. Absolutely. Yeah. Rather than beating yourself up, gee, how come I'm not C1 in all my languages? You're not going to be C1 in all your languages. Yeah. It's not possible. There's not enough time to do that. Yeah. So, but accept what you're able to do, however little it is in every language. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, no, I fully agree, Steve. And, that, and that's why, for instance, like, that's why I dabbled in so many different languages. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, sometimes, for instance, let's say I, I, was, I met a, a big group of international people here in Vancouver or somewhere in Europe. And I, you know, they'd be like, oh, like, oh, like, that's so cool. You speak all these languages, you speak, you speak French, right. you speak German, you speak Italian, whatever. Then I would sometimes meet a, meet a person who spoke a, a random, like, you know, like a more obscure language, right? Like, right. let's say someone uh, spoke Tagalog and then I spoke oh, yeah. and I knew nothing. So I, I went home and I thought, you know what? I'm going to try some Pimsleur Tagalog just to right. learn yeah. some sentences. Right. And, uh, and then I kept doing that with various <laughs> languages of people that I would meet. And uh, so that's why I dabbled in so many. And it's cool to see people's reaction. When even, Absolutely. You know, it's, so you can and and it's those. cool to, to get a bit of a flavor. That's where I have a lot of respect for Moses McCormick. Yeah, he's, he, you know he's, Moses McCormick? he's such a boss. He's so cool. <laughs> he's, the, the guy has so many languages. And then people criticize him for not being perfect in uh, all these languages. Yeah. I mean, he's done, I don't know, Estonian, Georgian, <laughs> Hmong, you name it, every obscure language. He's, he sampled it a bit. Yeah. It's like he went to this buffet and he had a little bit of this and had a little bit of that. Yeah. And there's absolutely and nothing wrong with that. And in fact, it's quite you amazing. Can, you can order a steak and sit down and eat your steak yeah. and just eat the steak. It's it's entirely up to what the person wants to do. Yeah, and not, not only that, but like I, I bet that like 
he, he probably speaks at least a couple of languages at a very high level anyway. Oh you know, yeah, so he speaks some at a high level, like, but there's no way he speaks all these languages at a high level, yeah. and he'd be the first person to admit that, I'm sure. But yeah. but whatever he does, that's his business. So it's not for anyone else to criticize him for anything in whatever. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Stone. Because I, I think that he, at least for me, I can't you know I can't speak yeah. for him, but like I th for me, for instance, like my, what I'm said, uh, what I like to do, like I, I have no intention in being a big language boss. Like my goal right. is to really connect with people. And I've been able to achieve that even with like a very low level in specific languages. And then like we oh, yeah. maybe we'll, we'll connect and so, you know, like I'll, I'll meet uh, like a, when, I, when I was single, like I would meet a girl, like exchange a few words in, in wh whatever language she had and then maybe switched into, switch into English in my travels or whatever. Oh, yeah. And uh, okay. so basically my goal is to connect with people through language. Yeah. But my, I had sure. no, you know, obsession with, oh, I must be... Uh, I, I no. must know a lot of words, you know, like in... You know, and that takes a lot of pressure off you, and uh, and pressure is bad. Pressure is bad. True. So, thank you so much, Steve. Okay, Always Gabriel. Hasta logo. Hasta logo.